Pastor John, you were recently in Memphis, Tennessee, speaking at the Kynos Conference along with Tony Evans. Any impressions or thoughts you want to share about the event or the movement or, or what you heard there while you're in Memphis? Yes, I want to celebrate uh, the Kynos event and the Kynos movement. I want to celebrate Tony Evans' message that he gave on April 16 in Memphis. Those two things uh, are just brimming right now in my heart. Brian uh, Loritz is the lead pastor for Fellowship Memphis. Uh, he was part of the church when it was founded, 2003. The aim was a multi-ethnic church of disciples and disciple makers in in the old south of Memphis, the very city where Martin Luther King was killed. So a kind of swimming against the stream vision of multi-ethnic churches there. And, and the kind of movement wants to encourage pastors to grow those kinds of churches. I think I think Brian's church has about 60% white and 40% black and and um, other ethnicities in the mix as well. So that's what the Kynos ev- movement is and the event that was held uh, there in Memphis I was a part of and and Tony Evans came in and it was to encourage pastors to to move. And and by the way, I should mention that I was also happy uh, because of loving this vision, to be a part of the book that I think was just recently released uh, in the last week or two called Letters to a Birmingham Jail, a kind of response that that uh, Brian and, and uh, John Perkins and I and others responded to in, in that book. So people might want to look at that. So uh, all in all, I just want to celebrate what Brian's doing and encourage people to be aware of it and to dream their own dream about growing the Church of Christ into the kind of multi-ethnic face that it will have in the kingdom. The other thing I wanted to celebrate was uh, Tony Evans' message. I I had never in person heard Tony Evans uh, preach. Tony is the, was the first African American to get his doctorate from Dallas Seminary and is the pastor today of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas. And we, he and I did a Q&A together with Brian asking us questions, kind of two, two old guys. I think he's 65, I'm 68, so we've lived through a lot of racial stuff, and uh, he wanted us to get into our stories. And my head was just spinning with amazement listening to all the ministries that uh, Dr. Evans' church has spawned. But what I, what I really came away with was a super happy, celebrative response to his message that evening. He preached, and then I preached, and I just sat there enthralled at the the way he used the Bible and spoke about the Bible in relationship to the whole issue of, of racial diversity and racial harmony. He took his text from John 4, the woman at the well, and he walked us through it, dropping nuggets of wisdom everywhere. And uh, let me give you just just a few. The pe- people really, maybe this, I assume this will be online somewhere, people to have it. I don't have that right now. But uh, if they can, if they can listen, I think they'll be greatly helped. So Jesus goes through Samaria. Jews don't go through Samaria. They skip Samaria. Why did he go through? Answer, quote, spiritual needs overrode cultural differences. And that was kind of the banner that was flying over this message. And that's so right. She knew that he was a Jew. She calls him a Jew. How did she know? He didn't say, I'm a Jew. His answer, well, he looked like a Jew. He dressed like a Jew. He acted like a Jew, and she knew he was a Jew. So implication, he didn't stop being a Jew in order to reach this half-breed Samaritan. You don't have to stop being who you are in order to reach out across the line. But you don't let who you are get in the way of reaching either. And those are the two prongs that moved me. So don't stop being who you are and don't let who you are get in the way of reaching out to people different from yourself. Stunningly, he pointed out, Jesus asked if he can get a drink from her. He's going to put his lips to the very vessel that this unclean non-Jew brings. And the point that he made was he's going after this woman's soul. That's clear. He's going to try to reach her, bring her to be a true worshiper of God. But he pointed out, I'm, I'm not going to 
touch your soul until I'm willing to drink from your cup. That was very, very insightful, I think. Best of all, for me, because of the long-term implications, is the forceful way Dr. Evans uh, put the Bible as the plumb line, uh, not racial preferences as the plumb, li plumb line in, in all of our activity with regard to race and ethnicity. So he said things like, quote, Jesus is not calling white to be black or black to be white, but both to be biblical. He said, biblical truth overrides cultural differences. He said, adjust your humanity to your faith, not your faith to your, to your humanity. He said, quote, black is beautiful only when it's biblical. White is right only when it agrees with holy writ. <laughs> now, that, that not only sounds good, that is good. I mean, that's just plain powerful and good. Then he made this little side trip over to Galatians 2, where Paul um, has to scold Peter for walking not in step with the gospel. And he pointed out, clearly, the gospel has um, implications for relational behaviors. And he, he used the terms, and I, I, I thought this was pretty carefully done. He said, there's the content of the gospel, and then his other term was the scope of the gospel. And he defined the content of the gospel from 1 Corinthians 15. He died for us. He rose again. He must be believed on by faith alone, and he uh, will give us eternal life. But the scope of the gospel has these radical implications for whether you eat pork chops with Gentiles or not. And the, and the last thing, very confrontive, he said that I took to heart is American racism would not have lasted so long if things had been right in the pulpits. So he's pleading with pastors, with me and others, uh, to, to see these things and to proclaim them with clarity and power. So I came away from both the, the Kainos movement, the Kainos event, and that, that time with with uh, Brian and with and Dr. Evans, greatly encouraged. And uh, I, I just hope lots of people uh, get on board with what uh, Brian's trying to do there. I, it was an honor to be a, a part of that event. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor John, for that update. And to find more information about the Kainos Conference and movement, see their website, K-A-I-N-O-S dot I-S. That's K-A-I-N-O-S dot I-S. I assume this will also be the place to find the John Force sermon from Tony Evans, although I don't see it online just yet. Also, I want to reiterate the new book, Letters to a Birmingham Jail, a response to the words and dreams of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which was edited by Brian Loritz and published by Moody. Pastor John wrote Chapter 2, which is titled, Waiting for and Hastening the Day of Multi-Ethnic Beauty. We'll be back tomorrow with a new episode. Until then, I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening to the Ask Pastor John podcast.